hey, you're back, good, because we're in the book of Ezekiel on a really hard part. So I'm so excited that you're back, so excited for today, and I'm crazy encouraged right now. Let me tell you why. So um, I had a little heart to heart with the Lord. I may have cried some, I may have broke down, and just, like, this is just frustrating. Like, I don't understand, I don't, you know, I'm so passionate about the Word of God, and I love just seeing and digging deep and being able to teach and share and you can't do that when you don't understand, and that's how I felt, I have felt, um, since Ezekiel chapter 40. It's just like, ah, oh. and then just started getting down on myself, like, why don't I understand this? Am I just getting tired? Like, am I getting wore out from doing this every day and this amount of studying and all of this and just getting down? So I was just talking it out with the Lord, and, and you know, Father was just being so patient with me and so full of grace and speaking just just how he is, who he is. I'm hearing his heart. And so I just feel this nudge to jump into some commentaries over it. I've read like little pieces of commentaries, like of, of certain chapters um, since 40, like maybe two different times where I really just dug in, especially with the animal sacrifices, just don't understand it. So I get on, I read some, a whole bunch of different commentaries. And like every single one at the beginning, which I didn't read before, but read at the beginning that nobody really likes these chapters. Nobody, like everybody struggles with Ezekiel chapters 40 and on, I guess. So reading this, um, it was just encouraging. Like, you know what? I'm not alone. This isn't me just, just losing my, you know, losing my fire, losing my understanding and that, you know, I'm not really going insane. I'm not really losing my mind and, and, and how I've been processing and thinking things. Um, it was just encouraging. This is a hard chapter. It's just full of difficulty and in, in understanding. And man, it was just this kind of release, like this, this weight off of me, like just a reminder. God, you know, Father knew I needed just that, that reminder, that understanding that, hey, it's okay. There are some things that, that we're not required to understand and and really get and be able to be solid in teaching on. And I love just the grace that he gives us and, and the space that he gives us to be vulnerable and saying, I don't understand. I, I haven't. Um, man, I've been speaking that since I feel like Ezekiel 40, but it's all good. All that to say, I'm just encouraged. So you be encouraged and know that through this, um, even being maybe frustrated that, that I haven't had a lot to, to share and teach and give and, and speak about it. We haven't had a lot to really go over because I don't really understand it and I don't, don't want to pretend like I do. So in that, just be encouraged. And we literally have two videos left and we are done with the book of Ezekiel. Not like we're rushing through that we want to get away because it's heavy. Um, but, but that's exciting that we've gone through this entire book and it has been full of just truths and and God has really just been speaking to me. I trust that he's been speaking to you. Um, Father has definitely been on the move. So it's been wonderful. It's been good. We're not quite done yet. So we're going to be focused. We're going to be in this. We're not going to just look forward to the end and hey, we're almost there. We're going to hold on. We're going to press in and we're going to say, Father, you're not finished with us yet. We've got four more chapters in the book of Ezekiel, and I believe that the Lord has great things to share with us and speak to us. Now today, it's going to go really quick because honestly, read through this and I'm not sure how to teach this. I'm not sure what I can speak on this. So it's going to be a quick one. Um, let's get into it. Let's just, let's be obedient. Let's read. Let's not limit the Lord. Let's read and let's allow him um, let's just lay this foundation out and allowing him, letting him know that, hey, God, whenever you want to bring these verses back, these chapters back up, what we're reading up to to connect with something else, then you have at it. Then you go for it. Whatever you want to speak to us through here, if things, maybe um, we can pull things out or he just slaps us in the face with maybe a verse or two that he allows our minds and our hearts to just go. He's going to direct us somewhere. He's going to do it. We're just giving this to him. Um, let's go for it. He's going to be glorified no matter what, because in our obedience, we're seeking him. Not the knowledge of it, but we're seeking his heart. So if nothing else, Ezekiel chapters 40 through presently, um, that's what it's been teaching me, that we're pursuing the Lord, and we've got to stay focused and serious on that, pursuing his heart. Not pursuing knowledge, not pursuing you know a, a level of spirituality, not pursuing um, is a certain amount of people to, to help or a certain amount of things to do or accomplish. We're pursuing the heart of the Lord. We're not pursuing attention. We're not pursuing status or 
popularity or um, people understanding and knowing, we're pursuing the heart of the Lord. That's what we're after. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm choosing. That's what I'm speaking and declaring for today. So let's do this. Ezekiel chapters 45 and 46 will be our reading today. Um, I would love for you to even teach me something. So after this video, if God really um, got a hold of you, leave a comment or, you know, teach me something. Oh my goodness. Like I would love to be awakened to, to some truths in this passage that I'm not hitting. Like I said today, it's going to go short. I do not have a lot to talk about, but um, let's just give this time to the Lord. You go read Ezekiel 45 and 46, and I'm going to pray, and we're just going to let God do whatever in whatever amount of time that he's got for us. We're in. All in. Let's go. Father, we, um, whew, we just thank you for being good, and thank you for being our encouragement when we need it. Thank you for just pouring out um, confirmations and reminders that we need of what our pursuit should be, of, of just the amount of grace that you pour into our lives, of our goal and our purpose and what that what that is, what that should look like, what your desire is for us. Lord, just keep us focused and keep us just so um, centered, so settled, so just rooted in you. Lord, we don't limit you today. We just, we just lay our excuses, we lay our lack of understanding all aside. We just throw it to the curb and we invite you to come in, to show up, to move, to speak, to reveal. Father, just be who you are. Just just be who you are and, and allow, um, we allow and we invite you to come fill us up with your glory. Just in all that you are. Lord, in, in all that you are, just sweep in, just just blow through, just pour out. Father, we need you. We want to meet with you today. We want to grow in you today. We want to encounter you. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We are amazed by you, by your glory. Father, just show us. Show us your glory today. We love you, Lord. In your name, amen. Ezekiel chapter 45. So this lays out the portions of the land. Um, verse 1. And when you divide by lot the land for inheritance, you shall offer an allotment to the Lord, a holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of 25,000 cubits, and the width shall be 20,000 cubits. It shall be holy within all its boundary round about. Now, from the beginning, what... Um, we've been picking up on from chapter 40, this new temple that's spoken. It's been thrown um, thrown into this as the emphasis of God's holiness, of just this idea of holiness. Of course, the divide between holy and profane has been the main thing of what God has been speaking with this new temple, with this this structure with this entire city, um, where it's positioned, how it's pos positioned, how it's built up, how things are going to be sealed in, how the glory of the Lord is filling this place. Um, holiness. Holiness has been the key. So this is speaking a holy portion of the land shall be set. It shall be holy within all its boundaries round about it. God speaking, this is serious. This is for real. It's on. This is different. This is new. This is so so consumed with holiness. So it gives these measurements, the length of 25,000 cubits and the width shall be 20,000 cubits. Cubits. What this amounts up to is the 25,000 cubits, um, doing uh, a little math skills there, that is eight miles. So we're talking eight miles on the outside here, six miles on the other side with that 20,000 cubits. And then within this, portioning out these places of where it is to be. So this holy portion, of the land, um, it says at the end of verse three, and in it shall be the sanctuary, the most holy place. Verse four, it shall be the holy portion of the land. It shall be for the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary who come near to minister to the Lord, and it shall be a place for their houses and a place for the sanctuary. So within this is the holy portion of the land is gonna be in the very center, the very middle, and the sanctuary being in the very middle of that holy portion, that holy place. So um, our last chapter, we talked about the, the Levites, how they 
turned away from the Lord, when the people of Israel turned away from the Lord, they didn't remain faithful. Then it talked about the Levitical priests, those sons of Zadok, and they were the faithful priests. So in that positioning, God says, okay, you who turned away, you're still going to serve, but you're going to have to serve at a distance. You're not going to have that nearness to me and serving and being intimate with me and being blessed in that way. Um, with that closeness of my presence. So the Levites were on this outside, but still part of this holy land, this holy portion of the land. Then the priests, the sons of Zadok, were below them in a sense. And then the sanctuary um, was right there. So portioning out this land, kind of explaining the size of it, it lays out the size, um, the positioning of this. Then in verse 7, it talks about this prince. The prince shall have land on either side of the holy allotment and the property of the city adjacent to the holy allotment, all the property of the city on the west side toward the west, on the east side toward the east, and in length comparable to one of the portions from the west border to the east border. Now, that was a whole lot of hard to piece together to follow along with. But what it's saying, the Levites and then the priests, then we have the sanctuary, and then we have the city, part of the city land um, there on the outside of that within all of this. Now, the prince part, I have no clue. I, I can sit here. I, I don't know. I don't know what this looks like, what this means. Um, this takes us to one of the cross references here in my Bible is Ezekiel 34, um, 24, which says, my servant David will be prince among them. Um, don't know what that means. A lot of people say that this is this is Messiah. This is talking about Jesus and, and his coming. And honestly, oh my goodness, I may have spoken that when we were back in Ezekiel. Maybe that passage above it was um, referencing Jesus. But with this and reading Ezekiel, that doesn't make sense that this prince that they're talking about would mean Jesus. So it says my servant David. I don't know if this is going to be a leader that God appoints that's going to be in the, the family line of David that he will have reigning over the people at this time and a leader over with this new temple. Um, I honestly do not know, but it talks about this prince and goes on and on about this prince and what, what, um, what this looks like, what his land allotment looks like. It talks about, um, he speaks against the princes in verse eight, my princes shall no longer oppress my people, but they shall give the rest of the land to the house of Israel according to their tribes. Verse nine says, thus says the Lord God, enough you princes of Israel, put away violence and destruction and practice justice and righteousness. Stop your um, ex, ex, um, expropriations from my people, declares the Lord God. So the Lord is saying, this once was the leaders who led my people astray, who treated them with abuse and violence and took advantage of them. The Lord clearly says, no more in this. This is about holiness. This is about my glory filling this place. This is the most holy portions of the land and what's going to take place. And my prince, he will rule and he will reign and there will be no violence. There will be no taking advantage of the people. Um, all in peace. He will act in righteousness. So all of this we know and hear about this prince. Verse 15 talks about then making atonement for the city, for the people. Verse 16, all the people of the land shall give to this offering for the prince in Israel. So an offering um, brought to the prince. Then um, in verse 17, it talks about, it shall be the prince's part to provide the burnt offerings. So he will be responsible for making atonement for the house of Israel. We see that the very last line of 17. So this prince cannot be Jesus. It, we can't reference it to Jesus because Jesus wouldn't be making atonement for the people when he have, has already taken care of the sins of the people. Again, at this time, Jesus has already come and, and, and taken care of the sins of the people. This is preparing the people and entering into this new, um, this new final completed um, covenant with the people. So um, even in some of those commentaries that I read, this is talking about... Um, some commentaries spoke up and said that this could be in reference to um, after Jesus, his second return, his second coming in this millennial um, kingdom, this kingdom um, temple, this millennial temple that they spoke of. So there's so much. There's so many different views. There's I, That's why I steer away from commentaries a lot um, because there's so many different views. There's so many different takes on it. There's so many different ways that people can take this and say, this is what's going on and this is when it's gonna happen. And 
um, we got to be careful with that. We've got to be so, so careful with that and make sure that we're reading and hearing what the Lord is speaking to us and how he wants to speak his word to us, not shaping it and saying, this is when this happened and this is what this looks like and this is when this will happen. Um, we've just got to be careful. We've got to be so careful and make sure that we're listening and we're pressing into the Lord to know the Lord, not to know um, knowledge, not that pursuit of knowledge, not that pursuit of of, of understanding when and how and, and, and all of this, but just pursuing the Lord, just wanting to be changed by him, wanting to be moved by his word, by his truth, letting his heart do something in us. So Okay, with that then, it kind of just rolls out like I cannot process how that prince could be Jesus with that. Again, it goes into more of the sin offering, what that looks like, what needs to happen, the grains that they need to bring, um, the blood and where it's sprinkled and how all of that. It goes into then chapter 46. I'm talking about the offerings, the same thing and what needs to be done. Um, it's talking that very first verse, talking about the gate of the inner court facing east shall be shut the six working days, but it shall be opened on the Sabbath day and opened on the day of the new moon. So emphasizing the Sabbath, the new moon here um, and what that is then lays out this way of worship, this way of sacrificing, bringing a certain amount of lambs, a certain amount of bulls, bringing an ephah with a ram, the grain offering, all of this um, that we read. Again, I don't understand it. I don't understand why this would need to take place if this was a time, if this was a new temple, if this was um, ushering in or being a part of this new covenant where Jesus had already taken care of this, that this is no longer necessary. Um, I just cannot wrap my mind around it. Therefore, I cannot really teach effectively on why these offerings do need to take place. So continuing on in this chapter, just it just continues talking about um, the offerings and the, the sacrifices and what that looks like. Verse 16 is another thing, again, why um, I'm seeing that the prince cannot be the Messiah. This cannot be referenced to, to Jesus himself. Um, 16 says, Thus says the Lord God, if the prince gives a gift out of his inheritance to any of his sons, it shall belong to his sons. It is their possession by inheritance. So, of course, Jesus had no sons. Um you know, was not married, talking about this inheritance. Um, we could see it as God gives an inheritance to his people, but as far as this prince being over, in a very literal sense, we're reading this, and as they're bringing up the prince, it's it's someone, it's actually someone who is leading, who is 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 reigning over the people, and, and, and reigning in goodness and righteousness, in peace, doing it right, doing it well, listening to the Lord. Um, but man, I, I don't understand this concept of who this prince is. Um, and not referring to him as a king even, but prince. Uh, so there's that laid out. If anyone knows, <laughs> leave me a message, leave a comment. I would love to know. Okay, finishing up this chapter then in verses 19 through 24 as you read. And I'm trusting that you read thoroughly, did not skip over. I did as well. Uh, recapping just briefly in this. So 19 and 24 talks about... Um, these places of making the food, of boiling the food. So again, um, in the same lines of these offerings and these sacrifices being brought, but there's so many of these designated places where the guilt offerings and the sin offerings are boiled. This, um, this whole concept of food and the importance of having these places designated for that because food is important. And I love just the simplicity of this and food uh, brings fellowship. It, it draws this this importance of coming together, you know, sitting at a table, um, that's beautiful. That brings about fellowship. For this Be So Be Moved women's movement that started um, this year in 2019, um, and who knows when it is when you're watching this video, but in 2019, we had our first Be So Be Moved women's movement, and what Father really spoke to to me and um, the core team that that, that kind of led this, that the Lord directed us all in, he spoke so clearly about this, a long table, that we as, as women from all different walks of life, we would come together and sit at this long table as one, and we would eat a lovely dinner and just fellowship, be in the presence of the Lord where it feels, where it, where it gives that sense, where we allow the Lord to bring us together as the body of Christ, and we all come together with one heart, with one mind, focusing on pursuing the Lord. Um, it was beautiful. And so this concept of food and fellowship, you know, you go back to the table of showbread and why that was important. Um, food just screams fellowship. It screams just getting together, sitting, sitting down together and talking and, and just being and being present. And it's beautiful, a beautiful um, concept. And we see that, I guess, at the end of this 
this chapter um, that that brings about these these little stations, these kitchens, if you want to say, um, talking about the importance of food and boiling them and following through with the commands that the Lord gave. So um, with that, didn't I feel like there wasn't a lot of, of meat with with teaching, with giving, but I'm not going to try to teach and create something that I'm not super familiar with and understand. So with the whole idea that chapter 46 was all about offerings and sacrifices when I don't understand why that would still be a thing and still be put to practice and the Lord would still speak specifics of, of what they needed to do and how, um, do not understand that. So um, that's that. You know, God can still move and even in our obedience, I believe that he came, he rewarded, he blessed, he met us here. I believe he's not finished. He's still got more to show us and teach us and, and there's so much more ahead. So um, thank you so much for walking this out with me. We're going to hit the next um, next two chapters. We'll finish up the book of Ezekiel. I'm excited about the next chapter. Please don't miss it. Chapter 47 is absolutely absolutely beautiful. Um, so much in it, so much symbolism, so much meaning, so many, so many ways that I believe that father will meet with us. So don't miss it. Hit me up on my next video. Thanks so much for walking this out and I'll see you soon.